Hi, it's Lisa here from This Is Knit and I wanted to record a short video today just to tell you all a little bit more about how to wind up skeins of yarn. So sometimes you will pick up yarn and it will come in this format as opposed to a, a nice neat ball. And if you're new to the craft, you might not know how to deal with that before you start knitting or crocheting. Um, so number one is you try to get the label off <laughs> without ripping it. So, and then you have a few options. Um, you will notice that it comes untwisted. And what you essentially have is some um, lots and lots of loops of yarn, one big loop like this, and it is tied in a number of different locations, okay? So it depends on the brand of yarn, but you will find there's sort of this figure of eight or this sort of woven tie going through in a few different locations. So don't worry about those. Um, they don't actually form part of the continuous loop and you can snip them off. And I would just recommend snipping them quite close to where the knot is tied. So this is our wooden umbrella swift. And what I tend to do is I actually don't cut the ties on the yarn. Um, I did record a short video just to show you in a bit of close up about where to cut and how the ties go through the skein. Um, but generally I would get it up and onto the swift first. Um, with this model, I can just lift it off and let the skein hang as I expand out this. You can see why it's called an umbrella swift. It just pushes up and clank it back into place and tighten down here. Now there's uh, some metal and plastic Swifts that you can get um, with a slightly different mechanism. It has like a, a tension mechanism where you pinch it and then slide up this bit that holds the, uh, the Swift and the skein open like this. So that when you have chopped off all of the ties, I'll do the rest on this. And one final tie. So the ties just play an important um, role in making sure that the yarn doesn't get tangled, either in this case in the dyeing process, because it's a hand dyed yarn, um, or in, in transit and on, on display in a shop. So now we have our end, and I'm gonna pop it for fun through the motorized, motorized winder. And then I can start running, but I'll show you up close how to put it onto uh, the manual winder, I think, because they'd be the type that you might uh, decide to invest in and have at home at some point. Okay, so I just want to show how to put the yarn, uh, thread the yarn through on a manual winder. Um, so you've got this twisty loop here. I tend to just lean the yarn against the metal part and wrap it around. So now it's coming through. You can, of course, just thread it if you want, but that's a little awkward. So <laughs> this twisty action does the job. And I tend to double it over so that it sits into the little slit here and is less likely to pop up. And then you're ready to wind. And you'll see the swift starts to turn as you manually wind your ski. But if you picked up yarn and you haven't asked for it to be wound already, uh, or maybe it's been sitting in your stash for a little while, um, you can also, of course, wind it by hand at home. So I'm just going to show you how to do that with a uh, simple two chairs and uh, your hands. So as before, you want to open up your skein. Some people call them skeins, some or skeins, um, and some people call them hanks. Um, this one's a little a little short on circumference, so we can have our two chairs back to back, but they're probably going to be quite close together. And instead of a swift, whoops, yeah, pretty close together. We're going to wrap the hank around them like that and then snip those ties in the same way as I showed you upstairs. And then you're ready to wind. So I'm just going to show you how to make a center pull ball. Um, they're nice to look at and they're uh, a little easier to work from as well sometimes. This just stops your, your ball from rolling around on the floor um, while you're working with it and the yarn will just feed nicely out of the middle. Um, so you want to just start by creating a figure of eight. Um, I just wrap it around my thumb and my three fingers, two fingers, whichever way you want to do it. Um, feels a little bit like playing cat's cradle or something when I was younger. Um, 
And I want to do that maybe about 20 times to get started. So you will need to feed the yarn off and it would be standing up normally doing this. Um, so more bigger of eight wrapping and then simply fold this over. So try and kind of open up this eight so that it's folding at the halfway part and you've got this nice little uh, formed circle in the middle and then loosely begin to wrap the yarn around that. And you can see I've kind of kept my fingers in the middle and the initial tail end is hanging down and try and keep that poking out because as you wrap the ball is going to get obviously bigger and bigger um, so just try and make sure you've still got a good bit of length poking out from the ball um, and I guess it's time lapse time let's wind a ball so as you can see this method takes a little bit longer um, but it does create a nice little ball that's ready to use and this is the center pull here where I've kept my uh, my finger in there to just make sure that there's some space for it to start rolling off um, and it can be done just with two chairs and um, one thing or two things to say is towards the end you may have noticed that I had to sort of move the chairs apart a little bit more and um, just to kind of keep the tension on the skein and stop it from slipping up um, and that's can happen that you need to just kind of adjust and make sure that the, the skein isn't going to pop up as you're pulling on the thread. Um, so I'll show you how the uh, motorized ball winder, the, what the ball looks like after it comes off that. Um, obviously one is quicker, um, but the other can be done uh, from the comfort of your home uh, while watching television. So if you're lucky enough to have the option of getting your skeins wound either by ourselves or by using a manual winder that you have at home, um, then your cake will look a little bit more like this. So this is the yarn cake. I'll pop that off. And you can see that center pull as well. Ashling is working away in the background. <laughs> and there they are. So. And they're two different yarns, so they will look, um, they are quite different in the ball. But generally I found that the motorized winder um, winds a kind of looser, squishier cake. And when I do it by hand, it tends to be quite firm. But both are good.